Hello there, and welcome to part two of uh, Strategic Zoomcast with Imperial Dane, of course. And uh, we're going to very quickly do a Dane special, something that he used to have in his cast, and we're going to bring it back. And what is that, Dane? The mid-game analysis. The current situation, the Germans are very much on the back foot here. Their plan to stall for big tanks has unsurprisingly backfired, though the Allies are so not getting it easy either. One Firefly just got knocked out, and the other one has seen better days. Yeah, they're certainly pushing them back to Blighty. Uh, let's have a little look at the stats sc screen, Dane. What do you see on the overview? I mean, overall, the Germans have done a ton of damage. Scotch there is sort of kind of piling behind, but he's also the one with the most kills. And he's the compared to the one with the most casualties. Here you go. And a uh, quick look on the army values graph with all four selected. Does that tell us anything? Oh, let me just set it all up. I mean, right now, Fnaston has the most valuable army. Nick has just suffered a massive value drop, crashing through, like, the Wall Street markets. <laughs> and uh, Isidore's sort of slightly climbing back there, and he... more confident in his value. And uh, Scotch is sort of uh, a bit on the south side. So you're basically telling us to invest in Von Aston and uh, sell us shares in Scotch. Fair enough. Uh, let's get back in with the action. Here we go, Panthers pursuing, Firefly's gone down, so it's certainly worse for wear. Meanwhile, T-34's got an excellent shot in on the Panther. Uh, wait, where are you in terms of time? 33, 39. I'm at 35. Oh, shit! <laughs> uh, I, thought you... <laughs> I don't know how that happened, Dane. We're rocking on anyway because I know our viewers have not seen this, so uh, Dane, you're going to have to be dormant for two minutes, I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah, Alright, I'm just sort of waiting at 35 minutes then, no worries, no problem. Of course we had a change, if you didn't catch it in the first turn, my, my storage space hits max capacity. Because this game is too full of action. Stukas of Foos rocketing down, King Tiger's giving, covering fire with that huge cannon. How huge is the cannon, Dane? 88 millimeters, high velocity, it's sort of the same as on the Ap Panther, the Elephant. Sort of there. It's Mystic. big. Yeah. Also, very good armor penetration. And accuracy. It's all about the velocity, isn't it, with the German weapons? The uh, Soviets seem to go for pure concussive power, like 122 millimeters, but the R Germans much more precision kind of well, penetration. The increasing the velocity had a lot of advantages. You meant you got more accuracy, you got more range, you got more penetration. There was a lot of benefits to it. Put it that way. T 34s on the rampage in the south. Just don't worry quite yet, Dane. I'm up to 34 35, so another daneless minute. We can never truly get away from him. He's uh, too many historical tidbits to get out of his brain. Here comes the Panther. T-34's got coordinated fire. Main gun destroyed. They're pursuing. Puma's coming in. Trying to harass with penal battalions, but they don't have the AT upgrade. And that T-34 is down and out. Axis are resurgent, it seems. All right. I'll be at 55 now. It's, just, it's a bit so 35 <laughs> All right, there you go. I'm just going to catch up briefly. There we go, 35-5. Panther hits a mine, just as he gains Vets 22. It's almost so he's celebrating having hit the mine. Not quite. I don't think anyone celebrates that, unless they're suicidal. In the north side, the uh, Jaegers are on the march. Recapping up there, we've got, meanwhile, the King Tiger's gotten 15 kills. Jesus Christ, Dane. It almost seems to just rack them up when you're not looking. It's an absolute monster. It can quickly kill them up because, again, it has, you know, reasonable good gun. Oh, Firefly got the Puma there. The rear target wasn't expecting that, and neither was Von Aston. Stukas of trying to give covering fire, but this Firefly is on a rampage. Yeah. And that Panther's not going to make it back home to Berlin. Well, there we go. Gertrude's going to receive a matchbox full of the former tank commander. Ken was creeping up on the Firefly, hoping to extract a bit of engines, but the Firefly is too fast. Indeed. A hell out of dodge. It's a patchwork quilt of uh, territory sectors there, exemplified by Scotch's penal battalions pushing right up into the faces of the Axis. The King Tiger is now fully repaired. We also have a Goliath. Hey, we'll have to keep an eye on for that. Little bastard. Fanaston's quickly pushing out some orbs of Darden plus an additional Rakedna if he stalls for whatever he wants to. Possibly a second King Tiger. Isidore could maybe do with a bit of extra manpower being spent somewhere. Maybe some orbs of Darden as well for him. They are quite good. 
being an understatement. One of the most well-balanced units in the game. No, nobody really complains about them because they're so well-balanced. They're good, oh. but uh, very punitive to lose models. Indeed. Indeed. And uh, we got another Katusha out for Scotch. To blast more holes into the Germans from a safe distance. Yes, the, uh, the Stalin organ warming its vocal cords for a orchestra of destruction. Oh, nasty hit on the Mivikas as charges straight at the King Tiger. They're, they're brave British souls. Blindly going into the unknown without any certainty over their future. Much like Britain today. Indeed. <laughs> Obelsal Dalton watching on as the uh, British and the Soviets advance with a coordinated fire. And here comes the Katusha Barrage. This could be a big one. Obelsal Dalton retreating. Oh, Isolating the King Tiger as the Fireflies pull ahead. Keep an eye on this Goliath. As the Soviets advance, it could come into its own. Indeed, but at this rate, it's going to be a bit too late. Sukasafus cuts a silhouette around its targets, not too... Oh, but the King Tiger more than makes up for it. Here comes that Goliath. Oh, 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 very good indeed. That's gone. That's certainly a thing of the past there. Goliath with an excellent uh, self-destruction. Indeed. <laughs> Fireflies from uh, a very respectful distance with a double... Salvo off. The Puma's very lucky to escape. Ace Puma actually bet you new five there. Those that don't know, an a Puma Ace has so many fantastic abilities. It's pretty much uh, one of the best anti-vehicle units in the game. If you take mobility into account, Dane. Indeed, it's pretty solid. Of course, it will require some good management. I mean, it's still not exactly a tank. Uh, correct, but uh, I think at the elite level, Dane, certainly a Vet 5 Puma of all things, it's just so great at nipping in and finishing targets off. But it has to have that uh, supreme micro to be a true tank destroyer. Indeed, indeed. And meanwhile, Fnatic is having a bit of progress in the south. And remember, it exists. The south does exist. It looks like a nice village in England. I think they're playing uh, cricket down there at the moment, which is lovely. Yeah. Indeed. It's always a good thing to consult your maps. <laughs> yeah. Lest you get lost and have to make have to say sorry to a man on a bicycle. Yeah, especially if you hit him with a tank, in which case there's not much left to say sorry to. <laughs> so the Allies currently hold two victory points. They're holding steady on 130. Axis, do they have the war-winning material to push through? We'll have to wait and see. We've got the Vet 5 Puma and the King Tiger. Fuel reserves are starting to climb. We've got a decent amount of pop cap left, certainly for Von Aston Dane. What's the last piece of the puzzle that can really give them the breakthrough potential they need? Well, I mean, what they really need to do is actually not aim for a breakthrough, but aim for a flank. They're currently just trying to bash, you know, the wall in with their heads. And they've rather need to try and come up with a big flank that completely unseats the Allies. Right, here we go. We've got rocket artillery coming down. The King Tiger trying to finish off something. Missing with a whiff. Here comes T-34-85. The Achilles and the Katusha are operating in unison. Forcing away those Raketten Verfers. Tommy goes down into the centre thanks to the accuracy of the Obel Soldat and just upgrading. Oh, my Air God. Down. Oh, God. Down. It was right on my camera line. That was. It kind of exploded in my face. <laughs> Fair enough. But yeah, it seems to turn into a attritional fight here over the centre with most of the sides being mostly neglected. Here comes the centaur to do some mopping in the north. We've had a spill in aisle five. Also worth noting it has been upgraded to command vehicle, so it's buffs nearby units. Oh, it's not often you see that, to be honest. Indeed, and Fonassen is committing to a second command panther. Yes, hopefully they haven't told the five men inside it what happened to the previous five. I'm sure they can figure it out. <laughs> so the Fireflies, they've got the Apprentice and the Master. Haven't really been able to pack the punch they needed to quite yet. We don't have any vehicle kills on on uh, either of them. But one infantry kill between the two of them. But they have done plenty of damage. So, I mean, they've been able to keep the King Tiger in check. 
Talking of plenty and of damage, the uh, Centaur's being more than kept in check here by the Command Panther. Gonna finish off with its next salvo, should the trees not come to its rescue. Fireflies do! The attack round misses. Indeed, but Panther's within range here of the Sappers. Attack, anti-tank grenade goes off and that Panther is suddenly uh, looking a lot worse for wear. There we go, the power of their heat grenades and there we go, the second Panther's down! It's also, not... the Fireflies got buffed a bit there by the command center, so they got a few extra good hits in there. We could have the Centaur finished off by the Stuka here. Yes, we do! But now, Nico's calling something bigger. The Crocodile. I must never smile at a Crocodile. Don't look twice. And the Puma is up against both Fireflies and knows it can't stick around for too long. And just joust and parry, and then get the hell out of there. As the T-85 catches up with it. Which it almost did. Spectacular view of the battle we've got here. The, the King Tiger's finally ready for battle once more, and what a battle it's coming to. It's cratered moonscape full of the strewn bodies of former Axis warriors. Meanwhile, Finesse spilling into the south like a uh, spillage of grape juice. <laughs> <laughs> and here comes the janitorial T-34. Waste okay, not, man, want watch. not, can run. <laughs> we both went in with a Russian ac accent there. At least King Tiger approaching Vetsnu 2, by the way. That's very solid. More accuracy and turret rotation makes it a much more formidable opponent. It's all about that rotation, isn't it? The uh, turret is as a traversal rate of a glacier. Which the actual King Tiger did not. It actually had a very fast turret rotation. I've, uh, Quite didn't... The Tiger 1, which actually had on the hand, was very fast to turn around itself. It did have pneumatics in its turret, though. And a lot of the turrets in World War II were hand-cranked. A lot of it was pneumatic on the Tiger, including its steering, of course. It had a steering wheel rather than tellers. Indeed, it was designed to be driven like a car. Yeah, it was. Uh, I've got an interesting fact about that. I'm, I'll wait for a lull in activity. I'm just going to double check. Middle's fine. North is quite tepid. Yes, I'll tell it you, Dane. Have you ever seen the crap film Fury? Indeed. I met the man inside the tank because Bovington refused to let Hollywood people be inside it. They had to drive it. The man inside it uh, powering the turret was a 70-year-old uh, war re recreational kind of uh, hobbyist. Oh, we've got a Katusha coming down. I'll have to keep an eye on this. I'll have to put a story back for a moment. Check out the also, north. Go on, Dane, what have you seen? Isla's put up a Yak Panzer 4 dash 70. There we go, the uh, cuboid of destructions rocking his way onto the battlefield. Anyway, the the Hollywood guy in a Michael Bay esque fashion was saying, Yeah, we need you to swing it to the left, then swing it to the right, then Brad Pitt Sherman's going to come straight up the middle. And they just had to stop you there. We've got a hand crank. The pneumatics don't work. And they had to end up speeding up the footage. And the old guy inside nearly died, Dane, of a heart attack trying to crank it as fast as this Hollywood director <laughs> wanted. Like... <laughs> Poor bastard. <laughs> Indeed. I met him. He was really old as well. Here comes the uh, Vet 3 Firefly now. The King Tiger could be in peril, Dane. But we've got the Yakpans are giving covering fire. It's all heating up on the battlefield. If they could hit, that is. Hmm. Only they were as dramatic oh. as the commentary I provided. Yeah, Firefly hit number two hit Vetsony 2. King Tiger is at Vetsony 2, so we'll never see if we can get any farther than that. Also, Isla's got a sector assault lined up, which could, if called in the crucial you know, time, maybe turn things around for them. Yes, talk about the sector assault, Dane. Um, not many people use that ability properly. What's the best way to use it? Generally, most people just tend to use most like these sort of shall say area effect abilities where they just like aircraft calling they'll call it immediately in there so just you know the opponent's plenty of time to get out of there and you know they can just easily back out because like all of the stuff is like halfway in the circle you usually want to like pop it in so like the circle is actually kind of slightly behind them so they have to actually pass longer through this circle of death when they just again with the sort of like what at times only at the very edge of it like people tend to get over excited and just want to like go for it now 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 but you know just end up wasting it here we go, talking of now, now, now. The Stukas of Hoos is again hitting nothing. F Churchill Crocodile's gotten its fifth kill. And took a bit of a hit there from the Puma. A hell of a lot of Churchill Crocodile facts on Lindy Beige's most recent 45-minute uh, video, where he argues it's the most uh, powerful conventional weapon of World War II. 
I'll let you make your minds up as to if that's just British uh, propaganda or it's a, a pretty interesting statement. Well, it's Lindy Bay. She's got his own opinion. Yeah, it's definitely one of the most powerful weapons of World War II. A lot of the facts about it are certainly quite robust, but uh, certainly a stretch. Oh, big movement of, t of armor in the north game. We've got the T-34s going for a Ooh. bit of a flank. The crocodile just wiped his own section. <laughs> I've not seen that before. There we go. Shot the gun, killed the last remaining two members, so... Wow, here we go. We've got the sector assault called in. Is this a yep. good usage? Let's have a look. King Tiger's going um, in... It's sort of reasonably called in there, at least. I mean, they're sort of sticking around the center, actually, so... They might actually see some losses, but there you go, heavy fire oh! fight. Tulip rockets both hit the Jagdpanzer, and they follow up and take it out. The Veteran C2, Fireflies trying to get out of dodge. Here comes the Veteran C5, Ace, Puma, King Tiger also in tow. This is a big moment, Dane. He should pop Blitz, create El Combat Blitz, since A makes it move fast, but also makes it shoot faster. Oh, the Ace is down. One, The Vet 3, Firefly also goes down. Von Aston says, you fucking kidding, and uh, he's right yeah. to be despondent because it's not gone too well for him at the moment. t 34s pushing in. King Tiger's yeah. reversing away. It's all boiled over, Dane. Close to Veteran Fee, though, on that King Tiger, but yeah, that was quite uh, nasty, and I probably would have been a bit upset as well at that one. Von Aston's been known to get tilted in competitive games, Dane. Let's see if he can keep it together in this one. Yes, we'll have to see. I imagine he's going to just go for another command. Panther certainly seems like he's stuck in that sort of rote movement of just calling him in. He's a little bit away, and he's actually floating manpower at the moment. 700. Yeah, but at the same time, that's kind of one of the issues with the Orbital Commander Vest. It just, like, you can really only keep going for infantry. You don't really have a lot of other outlets for your manpower. You can't build bunkers, you can't build caches, you got nothing to do with it at times. Going south of the Dutch Mastery, just lost Stern Pioneer to that latest barrage. But he just clicked through plays it. Ah! Actually. There's always a silver lining, Dane. At least he clicked the replace button very quickly and he was floating a lot of manpower. He's still <laughs> hauling up the second <laughs> Yacht Panzer. Not a bad idea. The first didn't do too badly. A little bit unlucky to get struck by two tulip rockets. Indeed. Another firefly for Nick to, of course, back himself up. I mean, two fireflies is obviously something that's going to punch a lot of holes. Enough of punching a holes. This uh, crocodile's burning a hole through the veteran. See, five foot grenadiers faces. Almost finishes the job. Yak Panzer King Tanger, they're going for it. Nice penetrating hit. And Orbis Line trying to flank are uh, instead getting murdered. Mm, that wasn't the best punk I've ever seen. We've lost an empty tank gun. King Tiger's going to go for a killing blow, as is the Jagdpanzer. Uh, However, they're being bottlenecked. And we also got a marked vehicle in there. There we go, the Vetra C3 Fireflies ready to tango once more. Very lucky to be alive, of course. We're now in our 50, 50th minute of battle, Dane. And, Indeed, uh, and it's not looking like it's going to be ending anytime soon. <laughs> not target on the uh, King Tiger. Not too sure about that. Well, there we go. The Firefly's getting some health damage off on it, at least. Indeed, indeed. And that should at least pull it back for a few seconds. Oh, and the Jagdpanzer. One. They're in uh, double digit figures now, the Allies. The Axis smell blood and they're not content to sit oh, on the victory no. points but here comes a huge oh, Katusha no, no. barrage vet three firefly goes down and uh the axe is getting pushed away all of a sudden need can't support it with infantry so they fall back wisely but they brewed up that firefly like as a uh poorly done kettle of tea just had the stukas of go down though t34 found it. it was getting awfully too far into battle that's kind of at the same time how you have to do it because the way it works, like the closer you get, the less scatter, so he's a bit forced to do so. Meanwhile, Orbs of Laden seems to be making short work of some penal troopers. And for STGs, force completely disallowing any cover bonuses. Third Panther, is it third time lucky for the Panther? Maybe, maybe. I mean, the Germans are slowly turning around, but it's rather happening at a high cost. Really is, of course. This is now his uh, 675th fuel unit spent on Panthers this game. Indeed. Third one moving out. Could flank a T-55 here with a no one on for Scotch. Panthers getting his first shots in. Flank Dane spoke of is happening as we 
see it unfold before our very eyes. Premonition, of course. Indeed, and it's looking pretty good here for Fnast unless he gets too overconfident or too aggressive. Almost got it, but uh, a quick warning shot reminds him to pull back. The Jagdpans are waiting in the center. This game has really uh, breadthened out, if that's a word. <laughs> it's gotten a lot wider, day, and they're playing on more fronts, it seems. It's starting well, to... Yes. Oh! Call yourself Shakespeare and you're good to go. <laughs> Make words up as you want, indeed. Uh, penal battalions go down to the folks here. fire. T-34 cowers behind that crap one-story house. North side, Obersol Dalton in peril. Crocodile is scorting his way through the German lines, but it's going to be flanking by the Jagdpanzer. What a Katusha Barrows this is. If he gets the Obersol Dalton, it was genius. Oh, couldn't quite finish the job. Indeed. But he gets a lot of other troops. I think that was a squad wipe in terms of just manpower. In terms of... Uh... Yep. Jagdpanzer by gaining Retri too, and the addition of Schutzen. There you go. Victory point-wise, the Allies have fallen down to 77, but the Axis are beginning to join them. It's getting quite a fair situation in terms of victory points. We may have a victory point race on our hands at this rate. We'll have to see which one then uh, keeps the nerves steady, because when things get low, some players tend to think incredibly in short terms. Oh, we've got Mark Target in on the Panther. T-34's going for a flank, joined by its allies, Rakettenwerfer, body blocking somehow there. The first one's going straight in, though. The Panther's not... It's bouncing all the shots through its glacis armor. Here comes the King Tiger. Its turret's going to be slow to traverse. It's going to give some level of covering fire. Yeah, but as you can see, he's quickly trying to turn around this. He doesn't have to turn the turret so much. Oh, come on, Dane. They could have gone in for that, surely. Well, he's moving out the King Tiger. Could try and go spearhead mode, which, of course, makes it turn the turret fast in a smaller arc. Also a bit more line of sight. And suppression bar, which it does not mention, but it actually gains a bit of suppression, I believe. Look at Spearhead. They're, they're giving that to the new Tiger race, aren't they? Yeah, they are. How, how are you feeling about that? Do you think it's uh, looking in a good state, the two new al al Axis commanders? Well, I feel like the one for the Wehrmacht is a bit uh, wonky. It's supposed to be this sort of you know, strategic reserve and equipment attack in, but it lacks some mechanized ability for the infantry to do that. It's got some abilities which I feel do not gel with that concept. As for the Oberkommando Commando West one, it's that's all right. It's kind of forgettable. Yeah. This is also a bit what the Wehrmacht one suffers under. It's just, it's all right, but kind of forgettable. It lacks something. Work in progress, let's put it down to. Now. Anyway, we've got both teams now on double-digit figures. It's certainly a race for life as Tulip Rockets rock the Casemate Tank Destroyer. The King Tiger Veteran C3 bossing the center, but they need to capture that same victory point because it's a triple cap, Dane. Indeed, they're down to 85 here versus the 77 of the Allies. But I feel like the Allies are getting a bit better at realising they have to use the rest of the map. They are certainly just uh, really developed all around the place, both in the north and the south. We've got battles in every quadrant at the moment. Fierce fighting. Indeed, the Germans are trying to act this. They're trying to break through, but it's not quite uh, going their way. In the south, we have had some level of uh, defence from the Axis. We've got boats grenadiers using the covering fire of the Panther to cap the south. Meanwhile, in the centre, they've captured the centre. So there we go. The drain is now on the Allies. It's 77 versus 66. Indeed, Palindrome indeed. numbers. Quite so, though three points short of 69. Oh, dear me. Look at this uh, unison. Our murder of armour in the centre. That was a beautiful armoured spearhead, though... Uh... But it probably been more beautiful if they tapped from the north, tried to flank behind the Germans, and you know. I think they've just heard you, Dane. They, they seem to be diverging now, and they're going to converge back on the Tiger. Let's hope so. Anyway, that would be pretty cool. Yep, Crocodile there, halfway to Vetsony Flea, is scorching away from the few German defenders there. Can't see the King Tiger at the moment. It's just out of their view. Meanwhile, meanwhile in the south, what can we see happening, Dane? Scotch is trying to uh, uh, level what Fnass and Scott there to push through to the southern victory point and recommence the bleed on the Germans. But they sadly lacks the infantry forces to pull through. A brutal, desolate wasteland out there. And uh, the battle lines are now drawn. 61 victory points to 66. Both, all four armies have a hell of a lot of material. It's all going to boil over in a raging crescendo. 
We can see this is starting to get desperate. He's actually using for the fatherland. Oh, really just wants that defensive ability on his own territory sectors. Throwing some grenades, Indeed. trying to force them away. T-34s are going for a flank, Dane. Is this the boiling over we expected? We've got the British can cohort in the centre and the flanking Ruskies. Could possibly happen. Could possibly happen if they caught it. Well, it could prove to be the crucial moment where the Germans break like a uh, brittle biscuit. Or will they stand firm? Like the glorious Ubermensch they pertain to be. Here come the T-34s, perhaps. No, the Jagd Panzers holding firm. Obersoldat and those experienced veterans from the Ostfront are running away like children. <laughs> well, children under heavy fire from the Soviet army. I mean, you don't think you'd blame any children from running from there. I was, I was going to say they were holding firm and then they ran, so it's just comical. But uh, <laughs> King's Eye is actually approaching Vetsony 4. That's rare to see, actually. It is. It's done a hell of a lot of work. 47 kills. And we got Vetsen in the Yacht Panzer, making it much more lethal. That could actually give the Germans what they really need here. Since Jaeger's going down. And the Katusha giving a lot of fire here. The Allies are all managing to capture the centre. 41 victory points to 66. Well, as the Axis have been pushed away with the Fireflies doing a hell of a lot of health damage to the King Tiger. Indeed. Might be the Germans time to try and flank the Allies. But uh, still going for a few hits here with the Yacht Panzer and the Panther. They just don't have the the uh, tanks they need. They are now building a Panzer IV, but it may be too little, too late. But the fire. Vetsni IV on the Yacht Panzer. That's where things get really spicy. He's pushing forward, almost as though he hears you. Opus I mean, I think that's a high rate of fire, so he might just be able to turn things around almost on his. What a nade by the Opus Dalton! Looks like they've been able, able to win the centre by their own. Machine gun, no helping this. <laughs> also, you know, good use. Oh, yes. Tiger seeing your major repairs. Panzer forming out there for Finaston. I think he's going to just charge straight ahead, and interesting enough, none of them is trying for the north now. Ooh. Crocodile Sorry. moving up, but it's getting flanked by the Panzer Four. It's an absolute race for life out there, Dane. It could go to any team's advantage. Indeed, indeed. Fireflies are waiting repairs. This is no one around to actually do the bloody job. Finally, we get the Royal Engineers Recovery Squad up. Katusha, though, with a huge barrage. Fortunately for the Axis, a lot of medium cover at the moment, so 50% less received damn uh, accuracy, rather. Oh, dear. Those orbs I need to get away before they get annihilated. There they run. 51 kills on the King Tiger. Ooh, close one, but not quite. A lot of damage coming down. Veterancy 4 on both... Axis tanks at the moment. Pushing Egg. forward now, trying to spearhead. They've got the Raketenwerfers in position. Could this be the master stroke they needed? Possibly. I mean, the Axe is about to hit Vetsen 5, which point it could use the cautious moment to just, you know, sneak up some hits. Finesse seems to be used by something. I think it was by the fact that his Raketenwerfers were found out doing something very sneaky. He felt sneaky in that moment, Dane. That's possible, but it is possible. I mean, he is Dutch after all. Sneaky Dutch in their dikes, trying to prevent the sea swallowing their country. Damn well. But yeah, Vetsni 4 King Tiger. I wonder if we can actually get it to Vetsni 5. I mean, at that point, they might actually just be able to straight up win on that one. Give us another 20 minutes in this game, we'll see it. We'll so have a look to see if we can get there. We've certainly hit the one hour mark now. Oh, there you go. What a battle it's been. This victory points is. You might as well just start the game now, Dane. <laughs> Let's just disregard the first hour. It's now a 50 victory point game. Let's see who wins this one. A bit of a charge into no man's land there in the centre. Oh, Katusha takes out those heroic Obersoldaten. Indeed. And now more heroes, this time of the uh, Redina. The guards push forward. Almost there is this game's called Company of Heroes. Oh, King Tiger obliterates one of them. And Pan pushes them off the point. The Panther's been very brave pushing in there. That Panther needs to get back to the action soon, otherwise they're going to stand no chance against those Fireflies, which are just tearing through the German armour. Here it comes. And the bonus speed of the road to get into battle post-haste, but it's two shots Combat. and then Tulip Rockets. Yep. They're being routed here. Too much fire from the British. T-34 pushes in. Can't quite get a killing blow, but the... Fireflies do on the Panther. 
Oh dear, that's another panther down for Van Aston. Another one bites the dust. Firefly also, thanks to the raquette and fire. So Von Aston makes up for it a little bit there. Here comes that pan Panzer IV he's built. King Tiger. The crocodiles just tearing through the kidnap as they offer no resistance. That's worth mentioning. Certainly don't. And they are going to get polished off. The King Tiger's also going to get found out. It's been a very weak target at the moment. We've got two recovery sappers going to repair. That Vetracy 3 Firefly in no time. Indeed. And there's no time to repair any of the German stuff. Oh, Von Assen loses his last remaining tank thanks to that great push by Scotch, the Frenchman. Indeed, and, uh, well, he's got a struggle as a first to compensate. That's not going to help. No. <laughs> Certainly isn't, and here's the cap. Could this be the last cap in the game? Possibly. They're down to 35 minutes of 54. I mean, it's still just a one cap advantage. It's still going to happen slowly. But I would say the bigger issue is Van Aston does not really have any force that can sort of turn the tide in the centre now. Unless they get really lucky. This predictive stu uh, Katusha just trying to stop them getting back on the battlefield, but it's too late for that. The Axis have already gotten back out with healed squads. They're making one last gallant push to win this game. Meanwhile, we've got the Firefly's rushing in to try and take out the Firefly. Oh, King Tiger. But it stopped. T-34, like a sheep dog, is uh, shepherding those... Jaegers out of the central circle. French Grenadiers pushing in under a bevy of a very literal fire. 49 kills in that crocodile valley. That is a kill. Machine, indeed. Much like the King Tiger, which reached 61. I'm starting to take a spoke in the past tense because this may very well be over. Got another far flung away for Nico. They're still not doing anything about the north. They're probably, honestly, where increasingly financially better using some of his attention just to try and rush it. Using the Stugas for that way to clear out the machine gun there and then rush out with some infantry. Which one they could seize that and maybe force the Alice and can certainly connect to the north. At which point, Isla's armor might just be able to do some damage. Oh, and there we go. Vetra 5 for the Jagdpanzer as the Obels of the Dot and give it the reconnaissance it needs. Crocodiles pushing back into the center. This is getting desperate, Dane. Both teams on 35 victory points. Raket and Werfer wailing on the Crocodile. They need to get rid of that thing because in a victory point battle, it's ever so important. Indeed. All of a sudden, now back on the field. Firefly is done in about a few seconds. And he's just called in a second Yak Panzer. There we go. It's all does being an absolute machine in this game. MVP for me. As, oh, God! The King Tiger with an obliteration shot. Obsalot could go down, but there is smoke covering fire. And Yak Panzer, they almost single handedly took out a T for the in a, matter, a short matter of time. But five stern pioneers getting into battle. Can the axes swing into their favour? No, they can't, Dane, because in the south we've had a, a moment of inspiration. One of the teams has gone for one of the other victory points. This is incredible strategy. Well done, and we can now see Van Aston's forced to rush down there to contain this absolute mess that is unfolding. Tommy's behind cover. Wait for them, though. This might only go one way. Indeed, in particular, the ones hiding behind the tree, they can quickly pop a grenade before Van Aston realises what's going on. Jagdpanzer, the fresh one, and the King Tiger push in. And the Allied armor must be quivering on their tracks right now. Yep. Jagdpanzer's about to go down now. No, they weren't. It was a trap, it seems. King yeah. Tiger needs to blitz out of there fast. Badass needs to get out of there. Both tulip rockets hit, stunning it momentarily. Vet 5 Jagdpanzer comes onto the battlefield sooner than its repairs were going to allow it. Main gun destroyed. And we've got the Katusha also giving a bevy of fire, Dane. And in the south, Stugas was fires up. Grenades are flung left, right, and center. And it's still looking a bit undetermined here. I still think, though, uh, in the end, Nikos has the advantage of Aston, who can't quite muster the numbers to break through. Couldn't quite do it, and that means the Axis are going to have 17, no, 16 victory points. They're going to start to bleed away despite their control of the centre. Indeed. 35 for the Allies, but only 14 for the uh, Germans, and we got another Firefly. There we go, and it looks like the Allies may finish this game with control of all fronts in with authority. That's despite having a Veteran C4 King Dai. Dane, we were so close to Veteran C5! Please go and kill something! It's so close, in fact, yeah. Also noting the crocodile has been upgraded to a command vehicle. Oh, the come on. The base is pushing ahead. 
Anything, even a plane, just to shoot the plane. Anything, please. I think this may be it, though. We will not be seeing the Veteran 5 King Tiger, tragically. Got the Veteran C2. Sorry, the Panzer II, rather, has gone into the center, but it is certainly good game called out by Nagano. GG. Oh, cheeky. Then he trenched into the southern point, so they couldn't rush it anyway. So they... <laughs> and there you go. Game over. A loss for the German army. I'm sorry, Dane. I know you're uh, a fan of all things German military in this particular time period, and, uh, you know, you, well, you can't, I can't say I blame you. Some very sexy hardware out there, and... Uh, well happens i mean they tend to sort of fall into the trap a lot of what commander as players do which is they just try to ground down the opponent they start flanking and so they just sort of stop finding you know smart clever fights they just you know start doing dumb fights at which point it tends to just partly boil down to rng certainly and we did we did see that uh god nagano had a good game but Silda, i have to say was definitely the the most valuable player he had he had a fantastic game. I want to see what his uh, what the damage on his best unit was there, which of course was the Yacht Panzer. And I've bug splatted Dane. I have bug splatted. Fantastic. Well, I mean, Island up doing the most damage. Van Aston was close. Nico was uh, second most damage. And Scotch, compared to almost did only half of the damage. He's a little bit this match. Kills wise, who's the one with the most kills? He's the one with the most casualties. Well, thank you very, very much for uh, casting with me today, Dane. Um, of course, the uh, not not everybody knows you from your YouTube work. I think that's had a good how many years is it now since two thousand and eleven? I believe. If it's two thousand and eleven, I can't quite remember how many years, but certainly I think five or six years, seven maybe. But one thing I will give you a shout out that needs possibly more of a shout out is your Twitch channel is is great. You know, even though you have, especially your 1v1 content, I think it's hilarious the amount of times you can blame your units for a human error. It's 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 inspiring, and I take great inspiration from it, and I've uh, I've learned a lot from that. Thank you, thank you. I try my best to be an inspiration to all people in the world. <laughs> so I, I would recommend everybody goes to check out Imperial Dane's Twitch channel. You may not have seen him stream, but his streams are hilarious. There's donation options, there's subscription options. Always give him a follow. And I believe he'll be streaming tonight. So just as these videos go live on the YouTubes, uh, you will be able to catch him live the very same. So again, thank you very much, Dane. And I uh, hope you have a lovely weekend. Cheers. And thanks to you, everybody. See you later. Bye-bye.